Right, so I got quite a lot done at uh, BlinkCon in between all the talks and chatting to everybody else and all that stuff. Uh, so this is just me wanting to kind of catch you up to where I've actually got to by this point, uh, which is mostly that a lot of the very basic styling is in place. And I think I mentioned right at the start that I will design desktop first and then build mobile first. So uh, what I tend to do when I'm actually building, you can see it on screen, uh, I do have a little bit more work to do around this, but you know this is what it is at the moment. I actually quite like working this way just because I find it pretty fast. You can use the the responsive, the div, like the device toolbar and responsive mode in that. I actually find that I get on pretty well by just dragging the the window out, in and out. And I will start with the at 320 normally, because uh, that tends to be the size of an iPhone, and that's where I tend to start, uh, and basically drag out until it breaks, uh, and then add in a breakpoint. You'll probably see there are a couple of specific break. There's one breakpoint there where we go from the new releases go from being a two by two grid to a four by one grid, and the descriptions start to appear just beneath. That's a bit tight, isn't it? Actually, uh, nonetheless, it works. It's just about there, just about okay. And you see as well that this uh, little bit of sort of marketingy type blurb that I added in is also. There we go. Whoop, there we go. That switches there as well. So I just basically work have been working my way through the breakpoints and just kind of going, yeah, that looks about right. Yeah, that looks not so good or whatever. Um, the other thing that's pretty cool is the the color scheme stuff. I mean, I mentioned this before that I was gonna I had the the code that did the median cut. Yeah. If you haven't seen that, I think that was number three. Entry number three. Feel like it was three. Maybe it was two, three. Two, three, three. Okay. Um, if I let me just grab my style, and if I say text content on the style, you can see here that I actually have a lot of inline styles uh, for the home page. I should say that just for the home page, uh, because uh, when you hit the home page, I want to make sure that uh, the styles are ready to go really quickly, because that's where I think most people are going to land on the site. Uh, for the other pages, I actually put the styles in as a link, um, but for the home page, I do it. In line so that it gets there pretty fast. And I've, there's a difference between what's sent in line just for the home page and what I put for the whole app or chunks of the app into the links. Uh, but it's, it is our way to do it. So you see, anyway, I've got a lot of setup styles here that's just designed to get you up and running really quickly. But at the end of that, and DevTools doesn't show it actually, it it, it truncates, if you see here, it puts like the ellipses, dot, dot, dot. So you actually have to ask for the text content. You can see here, I bake out the primary color. Uh, as as background, as color, and I do the same for the light color, a secondary color, a tertiary color, and a quaternary. And those come from that code, the median uh, the median cut code that I mentioned uh, in that previous episode. So I'm, I'm baking those into the page. And then when it's something like uh, the title here, I can say that the title should be the primary light color as a class. Now, I would have much preferred to use uh, custom CSS variables, you know, uh, like and be like dash dash primary color and then just set that in the CSS based off you know what I perceive these to be I can't do that because they're not supported everywhere and they're not uh, easily polyfilled as I understand but in any case it felt like I just couldn't quite get there uh, to use them yet so that's why if you're wondering why I've not popped it in um, as a CSS variable that's why just because compat mostly uh, and that's it really. So as I say, oh yeah, there's this little bit of little bit of a thing going on here. When you roll over these images, I just do a little bit of a scale, and there's a little shadow that pops out just beneath. That's a pseudo element that I just fade and slide down. That's it. A bit of opacity and a bit of transform. You've heard me say it probably too many times, but I feel like you can never say it too many times, except for when I say it too many times. That if you stick to transform and opacity, uh, performance will be pretty good. I have a little transform and opacity thing. Let me just refresh this. Watch the the poster image here. A little fade and zoom, fade and zoom, opacity and transform, scale and opacity. And it, you know, nice little touches like that. I think, on you know, they're fun to add and they add quite a lot of life to what you're building. Uh, but just showing you the colors thing. If I go to this one, you see that it's picked out the purple colors, which is not a surprise when you look at that photo, is it? Um, and I have way more to do here because all I've got at the moment is the description. There should be the uh, make available offline. We should have. Uh, being able to to Chromecast, all sorts of things. So I've got loads of work to do, but the kind of very very basic styling 
is now in place, which is fabulous. So uh, take a look around the code. We'll link to it in the description below. And I will catch you, well, next time, won't it? Hey, eh? Yeah. Brilliant. I'm going to stop talking now. How many times can I sign off this video? One more? Yes. Toodaloo. Hey, folks, thanks for watching. Don't forget that there is more content that you can find kind of over here-ish. And if you want to subscribe, there's probably a button. I don't know, maybe there, maybe somewhere around there. Click that if you've not done that. Brilliant.